Our 90 minutes of news beginning at 5 p.m. News Center 7 Cheryl McHenry will share her conversation with him about his path to the Marines, his recovery, and his reflections on 9-11 and the two decades since. President Biden visited Hurricane Ida's Northeast Flood Zone Tuesday. During his visit, Biden issued a warning on climate change. Yesterday was the second time in four days that the president toured the devastation left behind in Ida's wake. Now the White House is asking Congress to approve billions of dollars in funding for natural disasters in an upcoming government funding proposal. They're asking for $10 billion to respond to Hurricane Ida and another $14 billion for recovery and unmet needs relating to other natural disasters like wildfires and storms. Today, 250 Ohio National Guard members will head to Louisiana to help with recovery efforts there. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine said the Guardsmen will be gone for about three weeks. Still a lot of cleanup, Kirsty, to do there. Yes, and I mean, we're still in the heart of hurricane season for the Atlantic. So just taking a look at the seasonality of hurricane season, September 11th is actually uh, typically when we have our peak of the hurricane season. It will slowly drop off in activity as we head through the months of October and November, but September is uh, typically uh, when we have the highest number of storms. So obviously we just had Ida moving through. We're also keeping an eye on another tropical wave that does have about a 50% chance of developing into a named storm and that storm name would be Mindy and that again could actually impact Florida so we'll be keeping an eye on this over the next several days and then uh, tropo- excuse me, Hurricane Larry is still a category 3 major hurricane even though this stays off in the Atlantic for the most part it is still going to make a close call with Bermuda and then it is still going to produce some uh, high swells and waves and then dangerous rip currents along the east coast so obviously still a lot to monitor and we will continue to monitor uh, the rest of our hurricane season here, not only this month, but as I mentioned, all the way through the end of the season. For this morning, we are tracking a cold front. So that's why we were pretty breezy ahead of that front yesterday. We're still breezy this morning, anywhere from 5 to about 15 mile per hour winds with gusts up to 20. And our temperatures are holding steady in the 60s right now. Live Doppler 7 radar not active at the moment, but until that boundary totally crosses the area, as it moves through, it could still provide provide enough lift to give us a little bit of redevelopment. So you can see overnight we did have some showers that passed through the Miami Valley. Our cold front here, that's going to continue to drift south and east and as it does so it will keep the chance for rain around. So future cast kind of picks up on the fact that we could see a stray shower spark off between now and about 9 a.m. Once we head past 9, the clouds will decrease behind our front and we'll get back to a sunny afternoon. Here's 4.30 after school. Looks great across the Miami Valley. Tonight we'll stay dry and clear and then as we head into the morning tomorrow we'll wake up in the 50s we'll see again sunshine return to the afternoon on thursday i do think we'll just get some fair weather clouds as we head throughout the day tomorrow for today we'll climb about 10 degrees we'll hit 78 in dayton 78 in trotwood and 79 degrees in kettering one thing to note, again, weed pollen is the king here for the day today as we're still a little breezy this afternoon. The weed pollen count will stay high across the Miami Valley. And unlike yesterday, now our grass pollen is expected to be moderate this afternoon as well. So either one of these could give you some allergy symptoms today. Tonight we'll dip down to 55. We stay calm and clear. Tomorrow, 75, the coolest day of the week. And you can see we're still holding on to that northwesterly wind, which is typically what helps to keep us on the cool side kind of bringing that air into the Miami Valley. As we head for Friday, we're dry, mostly sunny. Looks great for Touchdown 7 football games again this week. And then over the weekend, we'll start to see temperatures warm back up, and it looks like we'll have a warmer start to next week as well. Let's get a check on the roads now with Sergeant Mark. Good morning, Sarge. Weather-wise, still pretty quiet. Are you hearing of any issues this morning? Uh, Good morning, Kirstie. Haven't come across any issues so far. Freeway traffic looks good. We've also been in touch with several area police departments, and everyone that we've talked to so far says it's quiet on their end as well. Had a chance to check out travel times along east, I should say westbound 70, uh, between the area of Route 68 over to Interstate 75. It's always a busy 19-mile drive. Part of it is a construction area over in the Clark County side, but things are moving very well. You can drive 19 miles there in about 18 minutes. I'm Sergeant Mark Bauer in WHIO Team Traffic. 521, now 70 degrees. New research links screen time and kids to their academic future. The recommendations and what could happen if children spend too much time in front of the TV. 
A dangerous bacteria was just found in a local school stadium's water supply. How it was found and what's being done to get rid of it.